Hi, and hello from Boston, Massachusetts. Oliver Freudenreich with Dr. F here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this quick take today, I am going to discuss what I think is an interesting topic in an emerging therapeutic area, the issue of probiotics as a treatment in psychiatry. The International Scientific Association for Probiotics and Prebiotics, that's actually, I guess, the title, defines probiotics as live microorganisms that, when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit on the host. You probably recognize probiotic products like lactobacillus or bifidobacterium. The publication that caught my eye was a review with the title A Possible Role of Akkermansia mucinophila in the Treatment of Olanzapine-Induced Weight Gain. It was written by a colleague from Trieste in Italy, Dr. Francesca Bertossi, and published in the open access journal Curious. Curious is spelled C-U-R-E-U-S. Curious. Now, I admit that I had never heard of Ackermansia mucinophila, but I treat a lot of people with antipsychotics, including olanzapine. And as most of you will know, olanzapine, together with clozapine, are the two metabolically most problematic antipsychotics. So naturally, I was curious. What is this? Acromancia, mucinophila, and could I actually give it to my olanzapine-treated patients to help with their weight gain? This is what I learned from the review and some ancillary readings that I did. Some of you may have guessed correctly that Acromancia, mucinophila, is a bacterium. It was only discovered about 20 years ago, and it is named after a microbial ecologist from the Netherlands by the name of Anton Ackermans and after its mucin-loving properties, hence mucinophila. This bacterium is very important for healthy gut function. Even though it only makes up 5% of the microbiota, so it functions as a so-called keystone species. You may have heard this term or not, so let me tell you what that is. A keystone species is a species that has a disproportionately large effect on an ecosystem relative to its low numbers. If you remove a keystone species, the whole system can potentially collapse as there's not necessarily redundancy in the system to replace this keystone species. So Ackermansia is in the minority in a normal gut, but very important for gut functioning. So why may Ackermansia be so critical for a healthy gut despite being in this minority? Now it has to do with, as, as the name implies, predilection or love of mucin. You may remember from basic histology in medical school that the epithelial cells that line the lumen of the GI tract are covered by mucin or slime, together forming the barrier between the lumen of the GI tract and the interior of the human body. Now, Ackermansia is a critical bacterium that keeps this mucin barrier functioning and healthy by degrading mucin and thus allowing the mucin-producing goblet cells to replenish old mucin, and in that way, preventing an increase in gut permeability. You may know, vaguely at least, that pathologically increased gut permeability has been associated with a wide variety of responses by the human organism, such as immune activation, which may then contribute to psychosomatic illnesses like irritable bowel syndrome, or immune problems like atopic dermatitis. Ackermansia also has been shown to increase GLP-1 production, which you may recognize from the newer class of weight loss medications that are GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide. As I learned from this review, medications like antipsychotics change the composition of the microbiota in ways that contribute to weight gain. For example, by changing the signaling from the gut to the central nervous system about food intake and satiety. There have also been studies showing directly associations between our bacterium of interest, this Ackermansia, and metabolic problems. One study, for example, showed that Ackermansia is reduced in bipolar patients treated with second-generation antipsychotics or in mice treated with olanzapine. 
There even has now been one randomized controlled trial of 40 obese or overweight patients that showed good benefit for patients when given acromancia benefit on several metabolic parameters. Finally, the review points out that metformin that we often use clinically together with olanzapine affects the microbiota by increasing acromancia. Isn't that interesting? So, can you buy acromancia? Yes, you can. I looked on the internet and acromancia is available as a probiotic supplement. And importantly, acromancia, at least where I looked, seems to be sold by a legitimate source. This is not irrelevant if people want to try supplements which are regulated by the FDA, but they don't go through the same approval process that medications undergo, where a company has to show not just efficacy, but also safety. Should you actually recommend that your patient buys Echomancia mucinophila probiotic supplements? I'm still on the fence about that. Given that it's not cheap, and at least in the United States, it will not be covered by insurance. So people have to pay out of pocket. We also have a good and well-established intervention for metabolic prevention in the form of metformin that I use routinely in my patients under lanzapine. On the other hand, after reading this review, I was intrigued. The idea of correcting so-called dysbiosis, an imbalance of the gut microbiota, if you will, is at least one contributing factor in medication-associated weight gain has biological plausibility. And in addition, Echomancia specifically has support from both animal and clinical research that it may have therapeutic benefit for patients treated with antipsychotics. Let me add this thought. I have a lot of patients who want to try more natural remedies and who would rather not take another medication like metformin to manage the metabolic problems associated with antipsychotics. In a more holistic treatment paradigm regarding managing your weight, a probiotic supplement fits perhaps more naturally, particularly if your patient can combine it with other health interventions like exercise and eating well. And at a minimum, you should have some educated opinion about this issue since patients may read about echomancia and ask you about it. This is my bottom line for today. Probiotics are interesting supplements for psychiatry, given the connection between the gut or the enteric nervous system and the central nervous system. The keystone species, Echomancia mucinifila, may indeed be, as one mini review titled it, a next generation beneficial microbe specifically to manage weight gain associated with psychotropics. But stay tuned and look for more studies in the future in this, I think, interesting area. Thank you for listening to this quick take today. <music>